survivors and welcome to First Aid Spray, a Resident Evil podcast by fans for fans. This is another episode of Now That's What I Call Survival Horror, the series where we talk about the music of the Resident Evil series. And in this particular installment, we're talking about the OG classic 1998 PS1 game, Resident Evil 2. And I am joined by Steve Valance. Good afternoon, everybody, or evening, or morning. Uh, Time of day, good one. Hope it's great. (laughs) And we are here to talk about what is my favourite game in the series, and I know it's your favourite game in the series, so basically we're just going to gush for a while about the soundtrack. Um, As with the previous episode, uh, Steve has picked his top 10 tracks from the game, ranked them from 10 down to 1, And we're going to talk about what makes the soundtrack so great and what makes those particular songs stand out. Um, And as always, with all of our list videos, and especially these ones, this is all personal preference. These are his choices. This is his taste. If that doesn't match yours, that's great. Hit up the comments. Let us know what songs you would or wouldn't include, what stands out the most and the least to you from the soundtrack. We'd love to see it. Right, with that out of the way then, Let's get the show on the road. Let's talk about RE2's brilliant soundtrack. <laughs> Not biased at all. Steve, what is your number 10? Uh, number 10 is The First Floor. Okay, so this is going to be the weirdest list. I apologize to everybody listening if you're expecting some real bangers, all right? But by the end of this, you're going to want to lynch me. So let's just have some fun first. All right, uh, so the reason I like The First Floor is it gives off, like, old cop movie vibes. I mean, it's, it feels like the mysteries and stuff, they're trying to solve crimes. In, like, you know, in, like, Ironside and hmm. stuff like that. Those kind of, like, kind of font to the music, and then you've got all the creaks and cracks and it very much sounds unsafe and this is like the first time you pretty much like go into the rpd go and explore Mm. and it always comes to mind when i think of re2 yeah 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 i immediately i'm assuming this is the same for everyone when you hear this song you just think of the liquor corridor right Mm. Yeah. yeah i think it's like the first place it plays isn't it pretty sure um, it might start when you're in the sort of like office before you go in there but yeah essentially it's when you head down that wing of the rpd is when it kicks in Mm. and obviously this this uh this these corridors where it plays like it's normally where a lot of stuff kicks off first like like si says the liquor it's the also the same areas where the the boards break through and Mm. zombies either lunge or grab you or lunge straight through the boards Mm. and it's haunting like even when it's quiet it sounds like there's something scratching around out there. And I just, I love it for that kind of like unease. I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, loving unease, but you know, for a horror game, it works, right? <laughs> exactly. That's what it's there for. Yeah, definitely. Do you know what? I think that in a funny way, this is a really good one to start with because it, it really does show the change from the original game to the second, the sort of evolution, the step up. Like the whole game mm. from top to bottom was such a massive step up and the soundtrack's part of this. But this really is a, a wonderful display of how different the two soundtracks are. Um, just, yeah, the sheer level of dread in this is is palpable because you said mystery and you get a lot of that with RE1 soundtrack and you get, yeah. you know, parts of it in RE2, definitely this one. And I don't know if I said this in the episode with Showing, but RE1 soundtrack, it... Some of it's quite sad, the mansion themes. It's quite morose mm. and stuff like this. Whereas, as you say, this is like, you are in the SH1T right now. You better deal with it. <laughs> There's no yeah. hope for this music. It's I'm just, like, SH1T, I'm SH1T. loving that song. SH1T. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it child-friendly today. Um, but I think it's one of the few, like, on on the CD soundtracks that have, like, ambient noise sort of written in, aren't mm. they? Mm. Which is, you know, okay, maybe it's just a feather in the cap, but I kind of like... Um, I, it's very yeah. experimental in that way. I guess because, yeah. again, it's early this period of game music where it wasn't chiptune necessarily or, you know, um, even like 16-bit chiptune. This is 
more orchestrated sounding it sounds more like real music quote unquote uh yeah like those weird creaking noises those big clashes of sound you get near the end that <laughs> it's like it's kind of like the track already goes yeah we know you're already on edge so let's just mess with you even more just master class it's like just the crashing and banging and um you know let, let's all use every single channel we've got to terrify <laughs> yeah. the player exactly uh, so, okay, wow. these are all our options. Let's just go with everything. Hit them with everything out the gate. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful way to kick it off. Hard, hard, hard to disagree with this one. Yeah, big fan, definitely. What's your number nine? So number nine is Mother. This is a this is a weird one. My brain finds strange reasons to like and latch onto things, right? So, I, and in this particular case, I think it's because you only get it in one playthrough out of the four, mm. right? This is the track that plays when Sherry finds her mother dying in Clear B, and it's uh, it's also kind of weird because it's such a bleak and sad theme. But it's it, the way it lands is obviously the lab is going up. You know, the, the countdown has already started. All employees to the prop car at the bottom platform, and then. This sad, mournful theme is just cuts right in and it just draws you into the moment. And it's just, it's just really nice in a grim way. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not overly sophisticated, you know, I'm easily impressed. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, yeah, it's a real human moment that cuts through all the mental giant eye man is trying to kill you. <laughs> and yeah. Exploding underground laboratory. It's yeah, and I, yeah. The music is a big part of taking your attention it, it, somewhere else. It kind of feels like time stops, if you know what I mean. Obviously, yes. in video game terms, it does, but it literally does feel like you, you are stuck in a moment in time mm -hmm. where a child is now mourning their mum. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's very sad because yeah, like you say, it's one of those things where it's like yeah, we have to go now, but you got to have this moment because um, yeah, this is the theme essentially for the end of sherry's childhood <laughs> you know what i mean like by this point her dad is not you know he's dead he's gone he's not coming back um the poor guy's trapped inside this giant monstrous shell and now you know she has to say goodbye to her mum. it's it's terrible um and yeah just wonderfully delivered that delicate piano line all the the synth the drone in the background, which is actually this, when I listen back to the site, it's quite interesting because I always associate that sort of sound in Resident Evil with labs. When you think about the lab sound, it's sort of like long, drawn out notes and stuff like that. So it's kind mm. of like it's fitting for the area you are in the lab. So it's not like it suddenly went in another direction. It is sort of uh, apropos to the environment and the atmosphere. But yeah, it goes in a, a different direction, definitely. Yeah. It's it's one of the it's one of my main reasons that I will at least try and play Clear B at least mm. once on my big runs. Normally, it's like you know I, I'm a Clear A Leon B guy, but yes. that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the other ones too. Um, yeah, there, yeah. There's some definitely some really cool scenes that I don't see all that often because uh, mm. I I do the same route with Clear A Leon B generally. So it was always nice to see this. And again, with the last one that we did, Ferrari One. It's really cool that they throw in tracks like this that play once and you can totally miss it. As you said, this is just, you know, you're completely skippable, really. It's, it's possible that you don't see this. So it's always nice to see these ones called attention to. Um, yeah, I'm sure, I think there's a few more like that coming up as well that are just kind of like, oh, I hadn't really thought about that. Mm. So, uh, number eight then, The Front Hall. Now, 
now this one, okay, my notes, I'm, I'm just, just read it verbatim because it, it, I, I'm an idiot and I'm not good at writing, but I think this makes sense. Um, it's like walking into a cursed church. There's a, there's a bell ringing and the chimes feel rightly like this was once a place of order and it's now tumbled into chaos. Uh, much like the first floor, the tones have an air of mystery about them and that safety is only relative. And I believe this also very faintly features the uh, the overall late motif of the game. I believe that's how you pronounce it, right? Light motif. Okay. Well, well, you know. <laughs> I, di- I didn't do music, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're exactly right. I think it's uh, a fantastic place to put that. What Steve is referring to is that reoccurring dun, 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 that you get throughout the soundtrack. And we talked about that a little bit in the Code Veronica episode. That these mm. early games do have these reoccurring melodies, and it's important to have this one here because this is the 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 central point of most of the game. This this massive uh, room that yeah, the, it, do you know what the the front hall itself as a room wouldn't be nearly as impactful without this music. It feels like it's echoing around the entire big wooden room, as it's like per, you're you're perfectly correct. You know, it feels very uh, authoritative. Because of all those bell chimes and the low piano, like bang, bang, but it's all but gone it's all to gone. nonsense. Yeah, because it's it, it's not like a nice follow. It, I mean, it's got a structure, obviously, but it's not what you would associate with you know nice music. It doesn't flow in a traditional way. It's just like parts that are stitched together. You've got a big piano bit. You've got these horns, and it's all over the place in the most wonderful way, really. Um, yeah, it's hard to dissect this one because it is so iconic to the point where Remake 2 doesn't really reference too much of the original soundtrack, but it had it to. It gets this one. Yeah, as soon as you <laughs> step through the door, it had to do it. It wouldn't feel like the room without it, would it? No. I, it's uh, also, in comparison to the original, it's the first time the central hub has a theme, right? Because the, there's only yeah. a brief theme in RE1, and that's when you go in to find, uh, quote, unquote, where is Wesker buggered off to? Mm, where's Wesco is the name of the track isn't it yeah. that's very true actually yeah and then 3 didn't have um, like a main hub really No. so yeah this I is mean, one of the few games that really does have the hub song <laughs> yeah which is probably why every YouTube video about RE2 tends to start with it hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm um, definitely not guilty of that <laughs> <laughs> number 7 then is weapons don't give us relief This one, for me, feels like, you know, you mentioned a, 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 the RE1 soundtrack and how it behaves. This one almost feels like a lost track from RE1 to me. It's mm. the track that plays before Kendo gets the window smashed in and gets eaten. You know, when he's like, you know, how you doing, girly? I'm not a creepy guy with a bow gun at all. <laughs> um, and it's just so terrifying. Like, I could, I could swap this in for the mansion basement, which is my personal, like, nightmare theme. Not the clown's farting one, you know, the original Mansion yes. Basement in oh, RE1. Yes. Uh, like it's st- that still makes my stomach churn, and this tune is exactly the same. Mm. Like, it's uncomfortable. I, 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 don't, I don't know the best way to describe it, other than it's like skin crawling me uncomfortable. Mm. Is it almost, at this point, because you know what's about to happen and there's nothing you can do about it? <laughs> is that a part of it, maybe? It it's could be. In retrospect. I mean, it's, it's that eerie, like... If you just obviously just stand there, it's like just a, an awkward build up to technically nothing. But I suppose if you time it perfectly right, you can get Kendo <laughs> properly jobbed off. And it's just, yeah. Um, I feel like the sound font is very similar as well to the first game. I know right. it probably yeah. isn't, but like, you know, there's certain like, I don't know how you call it, like the the tones or the, the, the area bits yeah. that remind me of RE1. Yeah, definitely. Um, I can see what you're saying about that. The instrumentation mm. and stuff like that and the way it's constructed. And yeah, it does It does feel like a through line, like a little bridge. Um, Which makes sense. I suppose it's like yeah, the first it, time it, you've just... Yeah. 
I wonder almost if this was a 1.5 track at one point. I'm not sure. It might, might have been. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I can it, believe that. Uh, it's, yeah, it's it's less dynamic than some of the RE2 score, and but I think that is actually in its favour because it knows what it needs to do and it does it flawlessly. And like as you say, skin crawling. And it's only like 10 or 15 seconds long, really. Like it's the same yeah. loop over and over because you, you know, you're not going to hear it too much. It's you're generally going to be in and out of that room pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, most playthroughs, you probably won't even hear the full loop if you're doing it traditionally as speedrunners and all the rest of it. If, right. if you're a veteran, yeah, wait you probably Kendo won't even to, hear the full loop. Yeah, wait for Kendo to stop talking and just run straight to the door, right? Yeah, it's not the weapon. You're getting to get the uh, hidden outfit, aren't you? So Pretty much. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just, it, it's funny because it's you're going from all the mania of... of the previous rooms, the streets outside, the crazy bombast of the fire and all the zombies fumbling your way through this unlocked door. And in a way, you should feel safe with this this dude who says, you know, you'll be safe in here, despite the fact that he apparently forgot to lock his door and he's got no weapons in his store or really much spare ammo lying around. And if you pick up one of certain packs of those ammo, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're meant to feel safe, and then the music the music is telling you you're not safe. This is you can't stay here. This is no respite. Also, the title is great. The title is great, which is funny considering it's on a soundtrack with a song called "Is Ada Spy." <laughs> Translation actually works on this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm. I think it's just a surprising one, but uh, yeah, big fan. So. Number six, then, is Leon with Clear. So this one, I know obviously we've got bah, 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 as basically the overall like anthem of the game, but this uh, this almost feels like the main character's theme to me. Mm. And you only get it once per playthrough, I believe. You only get it when Leon and Claire meet each other for the first time in the police station. It's uh, yeah, it, it 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 goes from like these weird um, emotional feelings to me, where like you know the, the characters are going, oh no, what the hell are we going to do now? And then it's just a case of, well, we pick up ourselves and then push through. It's, mm. uh, in a way, feels like a, a safe room theme should. Like, it feels mm. somewhat safe, but enough to pressure you to get the hell out of there. That makes sense? Yes. I, yeah. I, I just like, I like the way it builds up, the tone. And, and obviously it's scripted to go literally with the cutscene that happens, so that, I suppose that helps a lot. Um, yeah, That's I am true. showing um, my musical knowledge right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I've got plenty to say about this one. But you did actually bring up a great point. This piece of music actually plays in two different places, doesn't it? Because it can play... Are you off? Obviously, if you're doing a Claire A, you're going to hear it in the room just outside the library. Mm -hmm. uh, plays in the star's office then, I assume, as well. Yeah. Uh, is the dialogue for those... Are they basically the same? Those scenes. Around the same. Obviously, Leon right. tells uh, Claire that, you know, I'm not going to find your brother here after all. Mm. Um, okay. Because he's got the diary in Leon A. But I don't think otherwise it's just a case of like, well, we should look for survivors and get the heck out of here. Yeah. It was so good that Space ripped it off. <laughs> I say he ripped it off and we had Capcom's consent. Well, you know, that's, that's true. That's true. God, what an episode. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In terms of the save room thing, definitely. This is this is closer to RE1's save room than RE2's save room is. Does that make sense? Because mm. I, yeah. I said this to Sherwin in the previous episode, like, I think that after RE1, the save rooms took on more of a focus on the sort of tension of what's outside that door and, and less on the you are safe. For me, I, I always felt like it leaned a bit in that direction. This one is more hopeful than the RE2 save room theme is. Um, because it is that moment of, okay, we can do this sort of thing. Um, Leon and Claire basically just mentally having each other's backs. Um, but as you say, little do they do, they're not going to see each other 
until it's all over. I don't. I, you're right. I don't think this plays at all. The only other time they really talk at all is sort of over the PA thing in the lab, but they don't really get to meet up again. So this is the yeah. last moment that they get to spend together before they go through pretty much the whole campaign of the game. So it's quite poignant when you think of it that way. This is this is like goodbye for now. See you in the morning. Hope you don't die. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just again, it's just a prime example of the evolution of the soundtrack over the original. Th- th- this song has storytelling in it. It has character sort of progression in in the track. It's crazy to think about it that way. Um, yeah, makes it very powerful. I want to say I want to I want to fact check myself because it turns out I think this does play just ambiently in the star's office itself as well. Oh, okay. Uh, if you right. were to just come back and forth, not not that you know. I am, in fact, a Resident Evil fan and know these things, but sometimes I have to double check. <laughs> no, that's fine. So, that sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, number five then is Wreckage of the Mad Experiment. <laughs> Man, that sounds like the ultimate metal band name to me. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, or at least like some big like song. Now this yeah. one, this one's very, uh, you know, again, it, it's a secret track, and therefore it gets extra billing in Steve's head. <laughs> but uh, this, you know, this song, because the way it's it's built and the way it sounds, it always feels like this room, the room where you find it, is where all the secrets really are. They aren't in the game, but it builds up like this should be an evil evil scientists in the background going like, here are my evil plans and the world will burn in an inferno. <laughs> right? Uh, uh, you know, like the, the little imagery and the bleep boops kind of give, they put bubbling flasks in like proper mm. Frankenstein mania into my mind. Mm. Also, it is, you know, borrowed by a certain uh, Wesker for his theme or one of his themes in Umbrella Chronicles. You know, so talk yes. about lo-fi beats to scheme to. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, you're right, because this is a weird one, because it does feel like the music of, like, major revelations. But essentially, you're in a room with the tube and some ammo, and that's about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, this is an interesting piece of music. Oh, it's some, I don't know, it's acid rounds, I think, maybe, and oh, or some shotgun shells or something, I don't know. Um, this is one of the 1. Is- 1.5 ones, isn't it? I'm pretty sure this is the is, lab yeah. theme of 1.5 that needed to need to be shifted around it wouldn't have worked for the lab that they built for re2 proper but you know and they obviously didn't know where to put it that's what it feels like in terms of where it is in the game i'm glad they didn't get rid of it though it's it's wonderful it is as a secret evil science theme i love it yeah uh, it, it doesn't fit the tone of the rest of the game fair but... no not really but as a piece of music it's it's really good you know it transforms a couple times along the way it's it's not particularly simple swells up this chorus of strings there's like bam bam bits on it it's got a bit of everything it's sort of almost like the blueprint of what some of the rest of the soundtrack was gonna become later Mm. i don't yeah it doesn't suit where it's placed but i'm glad that it's on the soundtrack nonetheless i think it's a great great piece of music i say i would have loved like a cut scene though or something to go with it because it feels like it's built for that yeah, um, just a yeah. file in the room or something, right? Yeah! <laughs> there's there's <laughs> tubes. There's tubes you can look at, and if you're playing on the N64, a dead hunter. Yeah, that's I mean, it. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, there you go. Uh, maybe that's what there's it was, a, where it was like, oh, we'll, we'll add something. There you go. It's a hunter. Done. It's, it's the spare parts room, everybody. <laughs> yep, yeah, apparently. So. I mean, when you look at it in that context, I guess it is cool, because it's like, I guess this is where hunters were made and and stuff like that. Almost, especially Mm. in the context of everything, you know, maybe this is where the betas were made that were released um, in RE3 or I guess, no, there's hunters in Outbreak when you're down in the lab, isn't there? So I guess it's that. It is cool. And it's cool that it comes back later and it gets reused a bit more properly in Umbrella Chronicles. Definitely. But Yeah. (laughs) yeah, so weird. Yeah, so weird. So number four, it is Raccoon City.
So th this one, if you have at any point, you know, played RE2, you've heard it. It's literally, you know, truck has exploded. It's on fire behind you. There are zombies in front of you. It's just... Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I, I love this tune. And you hear it for, again, it's another 20 seconds, probably. But it's got like this little subtle like um synthy beat and like da -da 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 underneath mm. it. It's like, you know, basically it internally says, leg it. Mm. Run. Don't fight, run. And it, it, I don't know, there's this 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 strange like John Carpenter vibe, mainly because it is, you know, just a droning da -da 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 -da. But yeah, it, it makes everything very bleak from the outset, which is amazing mm. for a horror game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh Resident Evil 2 has got a lot of inspiration from movies. We know this. There's a lot in there that you can be like, oh, that's that's that. And Resident Evil in general. Um, and I think John Carpenter and, and his films and contributions are definitely scattered around. This is a big one, though, definitely. It, it is escape music, which makes you think of a very obvious film. But, um, <laughs> yeah, between the rock and the hard place that is a fiery wreck and a bunch of zombies you you better move you don't really have a whole lot of choice it's time to go um and yeah the like you say the light motif is there as soon as you boot up the game it's one of the first things you hear when you get your hands on the controller so it sets that up which is great you know um, if, if, it's, if it's your first time playing a tank controlled game it may be the theme for your character getting ripped to shreds to as well oh absolutely uh, yeah, when I first played it, I, you know, yeah, I struggled for a long time and was as a wee dipper, so I would have heard this, this track over and over and over again, as all the zombies mm. sort of walked in from the from the black void to to munch on Leon, and you get you died flash up. So I probably would have heard this <laughs> loop more than most people. Um, I'm still good. That it's, it's, it literally is only used for this opening bit, like on is, both yeah, like B weird, and A and B scenario, and it's. I'm pretty sure this theme has carried over it into like any other interpretation of RE2, mm. except for obviously um, Remake 2. Except, I think actually in Remake 2's defense, uh, uh, in terms of soundtracks, I know a lot of people get stick, right? When you put the classic soundtrack on, you get this loop for a lot longer than you would in the original. That's true. Yeah, which is funny. <laughs> which, which is funny because everyone says the streets in Remake 2 are really short. <laughs> but at least yeah. you get this track for all of it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <sighs> yeah, no, you're right. It is odd, isn't it? It's so again, just so such a short usage of a track that has like the front hall. You will hear this in YouTube videos forever. You know, it's just one of those ones that goes Resident Evil Two in your head as soon as you hear it. You just, it's so clearly Resident Evil Two. It's so memorable, but it's so funny because it's so. Yeah, it it's just a Resident Evil, you, and then yeah. it's gone. <laughs> yeah, so it's a Resident Evil uh, YouTube community trope. Hmm. Much like if if you're talking about RE1, at some point someone mentioned Sweet Home, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Much like Steve mentioned doing the RE0 Inferno of Hate, which has become... <laughs> if we <laughs> like can't get that on a t-shirt, man, all right? Okay, that's what I'm saying. It could be me dressed as James Marcus. Um, oh, I love it. Um, it's funny, one thing that I thought, actually listening back to this for this, like, you know, I listen back to the soundtrack a lot, I probably, you know, it's a, there's not many people out there that listen to like horror game soundtracks while they're like on the tube to work or whatever. But <laughs> hello. Um, so I listen to the soundtrack a lot. But actually sitting down and thinking about making notes about it. I don't know if this was on purpose. But there's like a snare drum rhythm in this. Like a do 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 when it cuts to sort of the end uh, of the melody and stuff. Which is... Interesting, because you're in the streets of Raccoon City, which is the location for a lot of Resident Evil 3, which has a much more percussive sort of military... There's a lot of snare drum in that soundtrack. We'll talk about mm. RE3 as part of this series eventually. I don't know if that was like on purpose or what. Maybe that's literally just what the composers think of when they, you know, when they picture the zombie apocalypse on the streets. But it is interesting because it kind of ties into that soundtrack of raccoon city's streets and the, and the stuff that re3 produced so it fits in nicely with that in a weird way and I mean, also you can argue i just oh, sorry, say yeah. listening back to it i was like oh this is where my love of like brass instruments comes from because it's like <laughs> it's got so much like french horn and trombone all over the place I'm like oh i get it now <laughs> <laughs> oh um yeah no I, I i can't i can't possibly disagree with that i am um, the only thing 
that I, I think of maybe is a it might be the regimentedness is to like imply the zombies shuffling around mm. and they're just focused on it's you. A march. That, that's, yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's very true. So number three. The marshalling yard. First half. Realistically, this could have been two. This could have been both Martian yards, but I'm not allowed to do that. So we're going no, to have to pick. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> cheating. So uh, in this case, this this is um, a very very similar to earlier. This is like a, a uh, an uneasy track. It makes me very uncomfortable. And there's not a lot that actually happens in it in the game, but it just feels so horrible. And much like uh, you know the first floor, there's there's ambient shunts and slams kind of inserted into the tune. But it's just, um, I don't know how to say it exactly. It feels like you're trespassing into a place you were never meant to go into now. Mm -hmm. And as a result, it just gets that little bit more in. And there's like this weird PS1-like choir. And it's got, oh. I, don't know, I, I don't know how else to describe it other than, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's really unfortunate that every time you do a choir thing, your mic just says no. So I get like the half of the first note and then it's gone. But yeah, it does have that like quiet it feels like wind sort of blowing through the place um and i think uh, i would really have to check and listen back and maybe play through the game i think this is the first time you get these sort of like light plinky sounds that just scream science in lab like we were talking about before like the long drones and the, like the bleepy bloopy part of the soundtrack so it mm. is like right you're not in kansas not that you were in kansas before you were already in hell but you're descending a new layer now this is yeah like compared to wreckage of the mad experiment this 1.5 track that just got shunted into some random room and and doesn't you know it, it should have been more than it was almost this yeah. is almost better use of this track, which was originally for the RPD before it changed. And it and it works how it is in 1.5, definitely. But for this, it is like it works wonderfully from this sort of transition of everything that you've been through up to this point to now you're getting on this platform and yeah, going down really into the true heart of all the horror. It works wonderfully yeah, in the change of surroundings. It's crazy. I completely, I completely glazed over the fact this was at one point a one point five track, and because yeah. it feels so like, it does feel like you're trespassing into like twisted science. Mm. Uh, yeah. No. I am. Um, damn. Yeah. I would say that this is. Uh, it's almost like it's one point five iteration just wouldn't have fit as well. Like mm. surreal. Uh, yeah. I, I can't picture this in the actual RPD. So yeah. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it. I was going to say, get a mod, swap the music around and see how it feels. It just, it wouldn't be right at all. It's, it, it's kind of like, and I'm probably going to use this word again for a later one, but it's like earned at this point. It's like, you've, it's a big build up to this stage where you're like, okay, it's almost like you're almost there, but it's not quite over yet. Uh, and it only, it's only going to get more disturbing from here. Yeah, I mean the only the only track from the first game that would be akin to it would be like the uh, the sewers or the mines, whatever you want to call it. Mm. Um, where it's just like this om ominous, like Ooh. yeah. But even then, uh, very different transitional period in the uh, in the game. So yeah, no, uh, I have no complaints. That's why it's so high up my list. <laughs> <laughs> so number two then uh, is Escape from Laboratory. So, 
if if you've watched the the YouTube or uh, generally uh, uh, know anything about me in general, I'm a big fan of the showy escape themes, and this may well be my favourite. It's got like a, a constant rhythmic beat coupled with dramatic stings and drum hits that always feel like the place itself is falling apart around you. Like, I don't know how to say it, except like there's like a keyboard like build up and it loops and it's giving you like a a mental fist bump of, of like, you know, Han Solo going, we're all clear, kid, now let's blow this thing and go home. And it's just <laughs> awesome. Uh, I, I, and then, you know, obviously you cut into Mother from uh, mm. the Claire B scenario. But then it comes back, and it's all like, yeah, hypers, swear words. Um, I'm just a big fan. Uh, I'm glad that there are there are variations on this you can find around that have both got the siren on and siren off. And yeah. it, it, depending on the kind of day I'm having, it could be either or. Like, if it's been a rubbish day at work, I'll listen to this on the way home, and I just feel like, right, I'm getting the hell out of here. Um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. I love this one. Yes. Do you know, I when you, you sort of sent me your shortlist, I was kind of like, brilliant, this is brilliant, what a fantastic choice uh, from here, didn't expect this. And I got to this one, and I was like, oh, I deeply disagree, this should be number one. <laughs> <laughs> this That's the only thing for me, this is difficult to talk about, because I this is my favourite track in, this, in the game, I've thought about it long and hard before. Um, and... To a certain degree, it might be the best piece of music in the series for me. It's 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 well up there, it's keeping good company with the uh, the Rain of Morning from Remake Two, Kendo's side story theme. But that's a story for another day. Yeah, I just think um, I think it's it's brilliant. Um, as you said, it feels like the place tearing itself down. In Remake 2, you can literally see it happening, but in the original game, you can't really do that with pre-rendered backgrounds and stuff. So yeah, this, the screen will wobble. That's yeah, exactly it. that. You might get some dust, maybe rendered on top, falling down. Um, but this music works most of the magic. You can see the sort of like the red siren lights whirling around the rooms, casting all the red light around, and like chalk and dust coming down through vents and stuff like that. And yeah, as the whole place rocks, it, it feels panicked. It feels like this is your last shot. It's really driving. The melody on top of it is quite morose, I thought. It's, which is good. It's, in a way, I did, wouldn't want it to be too upbeat, I guess. Um, it's, you know, almost funeralistic. But with that constant rhythm, it just feels so good. And like I said, I was going to say the word earned again. This is so earned at the end of the game to get this. Um yeah, this is the best escape music. This might be the best music at Resident Evil for me. So I can't, I can't I'm extremely biased. It's got like big Terminator 2 energy. Like I yeah, can see yeah, this in a Terminator 2 sequence. And that's that's like insane praise from Steve. Mm. Uh, or um, Aliens, like, you know, the I think it's called, it's called Bishop's Retreat or something. The, the bit where you're waiting, where, where you're, like it's a film that you're playing, Steve. <laughs> where, where Ripley is waiting for Bishop to land and the Queen's coming up the lift. It's that kind of level mm. of intense yeah, you could swap which was, you could swap this yeah. track in and it would look amazing with this song mm. it is that good which is great of course because obviously there's a lot of like alien and aliens in re2 so it's wonderful that you make that connection with it as well because it's obviously almost kind of what it's supposed to be i can see it in an oh, alien yeah. setting absolutely especially with the way the lab looks those big massive black grates and stuff and not to mention one area where the moth god resides. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> hashtag praise the moth. <laughs> so number one is... I'm almost scared to say this, just Do just, it, just so you know. Do it. Because everyone else is going to be expecting certain things of me, and I feel like I'm going to get pummeled. So it's um, the second malformation of G. This is the quintessential 
boss theme in at least the classic Resident Evil games. I would argue it's my favorite boss theme. Like, you know, it's got the main late motif, like motif, as I would say. Um, uh, but th there isn't a choir here to oversell it, like in the third file formation or the final file uh, malformation. And the first, the first version is a little bit almost like half asleep in comparison. This one's like, you know, on the nail, perfect. The ultimate boss theme. Mm. Unfortunately, it's, you know, the actual boss fight itself, not the best, but it, it feels like you're in a steel cage match from hell. Right, this <laughs> almost feels like it could have been a, a Nobu Uematsu final boss theme wow, you know, for yeah, a final yeah, fight yeah. for me. All right, now I know everyone is going to like go, Winds of Madness is clearly the best boss theme well, you know, for um, RE5 and stuff, but no, this one. I, I am entirely, entirely drenched in nostalgia and have a complete lack of new musical knowledge to fully state how much this is the boss theme. So therefore, Sai, please help. <laughs> it's hard for me to argue with this pick. Like, your the points you've made, 100% uh, agree. I think with uh, the third malformation, the choir is a bit much for me. It's a little bit too ridiculous and bombastic. I you know RE2 is kind of, when you talk about the plot and stuff, it's, it's a ridiculous video game. But it's not like Code Veronica, crazy. Save the choir for that game. If anything, I think you're right. This is the best of a lot of them. It's the Goldilocks of the three boss themes. It's just right. It isn't over the two over top and it isn't <laughs> half asleep, as you put it, which is totally right. Lumbering. Um, yeah, it's like Mochi. Just, um, um, it's I'll, just, I'll be all right night version. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not quite the same. It's energy. not quite the same thing. It does make you, like, it perfectly suits almost the bit where Birkin pushes himself over the edge. He's sort of swaying back and forth, but it's not a very interesting boss theme. Compared to this, where it's so threatening, all the crashing like symbols and noises and stuff, like those again that persistent rhythm in the background, which is actually one of the best parts is, is when the rhythm sort of drops down. It, you can hear it almost drop in volume a bit, so the melody can take center stage a bit more, and it's it's basically singing at you. Now you're effed. <laughs> you are really <laughs> effed. Like, it is so threatening. <laughs> I would never have thought of uh, Yamatsu until you said it, but I can totally picture this over something like One Winged Angel, Sephiroth, like say for Sephiroth, which would explain why yeah. I love it so much because Yamatsu to me is, he's my favorite composer of all time, period. Um, wow. It's, yeah, what this is a brilliant choice. As much as Escape from Laboratory is my number one, I, I can't agree, I can't disagree with this. Is Yeah, this is a wonderful piece of music. And again, it's just like a brilliant example of the difference in quality between this and RE1's music. Not that there's anything wrong with RE1's music, but this is so much more. This, it's so rich. And it's not even the final boss. And it's not even the final boss. We've <laughs> <laughs> got plenty to go. Yeah, it's... Uh, you have no idea how gutted I was when I put the classic soundtrack on for my favourite, like, fight arena in terms of mental imagery, which is mm. that, that running around that train car... You know, as a teenager, it's way more cool in your head. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. You know, nostalgically. And then they played the, the shrill version, and I, I was gutted. But fortunately, they do use this theme. It's just for G3 instead. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so, that's fair. I, um, yeah, I mean, how can, you, how can you disagree with this? Fantastic. <laughs> I think I, I, yeah. just, I just feel so biased, but yeah. Um, this is the part where I, I'm going to air out some, uh, some, some peace, you know, peacemaking with the community as I'm sure I'm about ready to be like, you know, crossbowed to the wall. <laughs> uh, so my honorable mentions are Ada's theme, Secure Place, and T-B. They are all very strong and I can appreciate why the fandom loves them. And I do genuinely enjoy them, right? But this being a list of 10, I had to like drop things that are either in quote unquote similar weight classes mm. or, you know, just not quite up to snuff like if i had to swap a boss theme out it probably would have been you know tb but that doesn't feel like number one material um you know a yeah. theme probably would be in the place of like sherry and annette's theme but again i kind of feel like sherry's theme beats it and secure place yes it's fantastic but i honestly think out of all the savory themes from any resident evil game i have heard it that many times it's got a little old which is why i can prefer leon and claire's like meetup theme to it that's where they would rank theoretically on the list. Like, you know, Ada would be uh, at nine. Secure Place would be at six. And theoretically, T-B would be at 
uh, two. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, please, please put the hammer down comment section, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, you're all grand and lovely. Just please, no. Oh, God. Ah! <laughs> Do you know what? I think it's... Here's the sort of devil's advocate, I suppose, is that, like you say, you've heard this soundtrack so many times. We've all listened to this soundtrack so many times as a fan of this game. Sometimes it is nice to spend a little bit more attention on the overlooked tracks and you will lean to them because you don't hear them as much and you go, it's so underappreciated, it's so good. So I completely understand, you know, all of these tracks that you mentioned, all three of them, get used a lot for very good reason. They're all brilliant. Let's face it, the whole soundtrack, top to bottom, is just stellar. 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah. But like, sometimes it's nice I feel to... unfair, Si, because I've, I've taken this one from you. This should have been your... Oh, no, no, own. I've got my own plans. It's fine, don't worry. <laughs> okay. The, I mean, the fact of the matter is I get to be on all of these, so I win either way. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, I, I, think it's, I think it's good. We got to, to talk about some other stuff and maybe make people go, do you know what? Like a track like Mother, like, yeah, there is uh, not enough love for stuff like that. So, yeah, it is worth mentioning them, like you say. But as always, it's a personal preference list. So if you are, are violently disagreeing, hit up the comments. Be nice, be civil. But, yeah, throw your argument into, into the ring why you think such and such a track should have been on here and stuff like that. That's what I say. Well, I think the save room theme should have been on here because Steve is a big smelly fart head. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. I may or may not believe those ones. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining me, Steve. Wonderful as ever to talk Resident Evil with you. Oh, well, you know, I just thank you for having me, Si. It's um, surreal is the word of the day. <laughs> Talking about music when I have no musical knowledge, it feels so <laughs> qualified you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Ah, it's all about the, it's all about the love and the passion. That's what it is. You just just do what I do and make it sound like you know what you're talking about. As we said, hit up the comments. Let us know what you thought of the list. Let us know what you would put on yours. Subscribe to stay up to date with everything that we do, including now that's what I call survival horror. And if you support us on Patreon, you can get episodes of this show a month before everyone else. So it is worth checking out patreon.com forward slash fa spray pod. And as always. Thanks for listening and have a good week.